Hello, welcome back to another mail day video. I have one, two, three things that I got in the mail uh, and two things that I picked up at HMV. So I thought I would show you those now because uh, some of them I have seen and so I have an opinion on and uh, I'm, I'm quite excited about a few of them. Uh, first off, I've um, got a couple criterions here and I should give a shout out to Alex who was, was touting this guy on eBay who was selling some criterions at a good price. Um, and he also mentioned it on blu-ray.com and so I went over and, and checked out what this guy had and he had a lot of great titles one that I was really um, looking forward to in particular uh, and so I decided to bite the bullet and order it from this guy and it turned up the next day signed first class post and it's probably the best condition used blu-ray I've ever received so I couldn't be happy with this and it's a film that I've wanted for a very long time on blu-ray it is Harold Lloyd's Safety Last Incredible film, uh, a great silent film that I definitely need to revisit, especially in high definition. I can't wait. I first watched this in my very first silent movie marathon in 2014, so it's been three years now. And I can't wait to revisit it. I mean, just a classic film just for the iconography of him climbing up the side of that building at the end and hanging off the clock, but a really great silent comedy as well. And I'm a huge fan of Harold Lloyd, and since watching this for the first time, I've watched more of his other films. The Kid Brother is a favorite of mine. I hope Criterion released that. Uh, Speedy was brilliant. I watched that in my fourth silent movie marathon, which is still kind of filming and isn't finished or anything. Um, and this Criterion Edition is just stunning. I love the artwork from the back. You see him climbing up there, just really nicely composed. Um, you know, the inside artwork, the booklet. I've already read the booklet back to back. That's how much I love this film and I'm excited that I finally have it. Um, and the special features are really a big sell on this too. You have um, uh, two different scores, one by Gaylord Carter and one from Carl Davis, uh, the legend of silent movie scores and audio commentary. Uh, with um, Harold Lloyd archivist Richard Carell and film critic Leonard Malting. Malton. I love Leonard Malton, I love his podcast, Malton on Movies, and uh, one of his particular episodes last year, I think, he talked about the silent um, comedians, Buster Keaton, uh, Harold Lloyd, and Charlie Chaplin, and he spoke very enthusiastically about them, so I'm really looking forward to the audio commentary on this, knowing that he's involved. Uh, there's an introduction by Harold Lloyd's granddaughter, and the big sell for me is Harold Lloyd, The Third Genius, a 108-minute documentary from 1989, uh, and that was uh, produced by Kevin Brownlow, who did uh, a number of documentaries in the 80s for, on silent comedians. Uh, one of the big ones is Buster Keaton, A Hard Act to Follow, which I own on DVD. It's a phenomenal documentary. And it's produced, again, it's the same kind of um, team behind that one. So I can't wait to check out the Harold Lloyd retrospective documentary. I know it's going to be great. Uh, three newly restored Harold Lloyd short films from 1918, 1919, and 1920, also with commentaries and a new documentary uh, going to the locations and uh, talking about the visual effects of the film and a new interview with Davis. I'm assuming that means Carl Davis. So this release is absolutely stacked. I, I couldn't be happier to add it into my collection. Um, so yeah, really, really happy about that. Um, and then another criterion I got uh, and ordered it months ago uh, and I, I don't know anything about it. This is really one of those kind of uh, guilty buys, I guess. Uh, and it is Overlord. I think it's a war movie. Otherwise, I'm not too sure. The only reason I bought this is because it's a Criterion, and it was going on eBay for like £4. That was crazy, and it was brand new and sealed. Everyone was were, were buying copies and saying, this is legit, this is a brand new Criterion for £4, you know. So I just jumped on it, you know. It's just one of those ones to add to the collection. Uh, and I trust Criterion that they release, if not films that I'll enjoy, important films. Uh, tons of special features. Uh, and I won't really go into it too much. It says, seamlessly interweaving archival war footage with a fictional narrative from 1975. Um, so yeah, this could be a surprise. It could be like a really great film that I, you know, just hits me like a brick out of nowhere or, you know, who knows, but it, it was worth the, the pop for four quid for a brand new Criterion title, I have to say. So, and this is one of the UK versions as well that was released, I think in the initial wave when they first launched in the UK last year. Uh, a Steelbook release, um, which I'm really happy to own and add to my uh, Joe Dante collection, one of my favorite directors, Inner Space. And this is an absolutely gorgeous piece of poster artwork there. I don't know who did this. Me, is this a, um, a Drew Struzan? It looks like it might be. In fact, no, on closer inspection, it doesn't look like a Struzan, but um, either way, going back to the 80s and, and the 90s in some case, I think this is from the 90s, no, 1987. Um, 
the poster artwork was just incredible. I mean, you look at modern posters now, and it's just like, you know, the, 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 the art in movie posters has kind of slowly been lost, and it's only around as kind of a revival, you know. Um, like, the IMAX poster might get, like, a nice kind of gorgeous painted thing, but otherwise, the standard movie posters, they're just photoshopped together. Uh, and I love this poster artwork. And it's a really fun film, too. It, it's in my lower half of favorites of Joe Dante, I think, but it's about this guy who... um is working on, on shrinking things, and uh, uh, Dennis Quaid, I always get Randy Quaid and Dennis Quaid mixed up, Dennis Quaid ends up being uh, shrunk inside this little tiny like ship inside someone's body, uh, and then uh, Martin Short gets involved, Meg Ryan gets involved, and it's a fun adventure, uh, it's a good comedy, and uh, one I'm looking forward to revisiting as well. I remember enjoying it very much when I first watched it a few years ago, and uh, it's nice to get a nice steelbook release, I think this was from Zabby, um, and a commentary with Joe Dante, Seems to be the only special feature, and I'll tell you what, that's fine with me. Oh, and also visual effects supervisor Dennis Muren, who I believe holds the distinction of of winning maybe the most Oscars of anyone. Dennis Muren, I don't know, I, I think I'm, I remember looking up at his um, Wikipedia page. He's won so many Oscars for special effects, worked on Star Wars and many other films, but Inner Space, uh, maybe I should take off the, I don't know, I think I'll leave it. Oh, I don't know, it looks like the, the back artwork looks quite nice, so let's just open it up. Um, and check out the inside artwork. I'm sure I did check before I bought it, or pr I pre-ordered it a few months ago, so it's been a while. Um, I think that the ratings logo on the front is removable, the PG there. Let me see if I can uh, work that off there. Yes, the it is removable, and it's left quite a, quite a bit of residue there, which is unfortunate, and I was able to take it off. Yeah, a little tip there sometimes, if you if you take a sticker off and there's some residue, kind of just place it back on and kind of just do that and it, it sometimes gets it off, so I managed to remove the residue there. Um, and of course the, the J card is glued to the back of the steelbook, which is always wonderful. Um, oh my god, oh, holy moly, this is incredible back artwork. Once I manage to get the glue off, you'll be able to see it. Holy shit. Right, give me a second. Right, so here's the, the front in all its glory, just stunning, and here's the back. Holy shit, that's just... They, they, they don't make them like they used to, as far as posters are concerned, that's just stunning. That really is, I love that back artwork. And then on the spine you have the, the logo of the film. I don't know how the camera's going to focus on that. And then the inside, um, quite a hard to make out image actually. Uh, especially with the glare, so yeah, that's not quite as, as vibrant and colourful as the, the front and back, but yeah, I'm really happy with that artwork on the, the back. Stunning steelbook, really, really happy with that one. And finally, I picked up two things in HMV um, in the 2 for 25 deal. The first one is a Studio Ghibli film I've not seen, The Cat Returns. I think I almost watched this with James Merchant once when I stayed over his, his place a couple of years ago. He said it was really funny. I think. Again, I'm hoping my memory has served me correctly here. Uh, and I believe this features the Baron from Whisper of the Heart. So this is really the only Ghibli film that is even a quasi-sequel spin-off. Uh, it's not really a sequel to Whisper of the Heart, but it has a character that appeared in Whisper of the Heart. But Whisper of the Heart was a very grounded film, and the Baron was this fantasy character. And I believe this is more of a fantasy film. Uh, quite a short one, uh, 74 minutes. I might do a review of this, uh, maybe even with my brother, because he enjoys Ghibli films. So I might show this to him, and we'll watch it together at the same time. Maybe film a review, do something like that. That'd be cool and fun. But yeah, always nice to add a Ghibli film to the collection and to find uh, a slipcover that's in good condition, because you know sometimes they're just they're really hard to find. I know that. Uh, Arietti is almost impossible to find with a slipcover now, um, and there's a couple of other ones as well, but yeah, always nice to get a slipcover because these are great films and they deserve the nicest packaging possible, in my opinion. And the other one I picked up was part of the Premium Collection, of which I have quite a few, and I'm really glad that this got a nice release because it's from probably my favourite director working right now, one of my favourite directors of all time, Richard Linklater, is Scanner Darkly. I owned this on DVD years ago. Um, my mum used to work at Woolworths, and when they were going out of business and they were just getting rid of everything, they were just throwing DVDs out like like nobody's business, and a Scanner Darkly was one of them that I got for free. And I watched a bit of it, 
and, and, and really like the idea of it, you know, this, this uh, filming, making a film, filming it, cutting it, editing it together, and then getting a team to kind of draw over it, rotoscoped animation. Um, but I never watched the whole film, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out now. Uh, a, a huge cast, really. You've got Keanu Reeves, Robert Downey Jr., Woody Harrelson, Winona Ryder, uh, and the second rotoscoped animation film that Richard Linklater has made after Waking Life, uh, which has a really nice Arrow video release. So yeah, this is this is cool. I'm not sure what the special features are actually. A commentary with Keanu Reeves, uh, Richard Linklater, uh, producer of the film, uh, and yeah, and then the Weight of the Line animation tales. I hope that's kind of a good length documentary. It sounds like it could be more of a featurette though. Um, so yeah, a scanner darkly. Really looking forward to checking this one out, and I'll do an animation assessment review on this one as well. I think. Probably. Uh, but yeah, there we go. That's a nice little update there. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on any of the titles I've shown, and I'll see you in the next video. Apart from the fact he throws cans and Carl in into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...